I did fall in love with you at Big Sky. Damn. I'll talk. Uh, we'll talk. We'll get to that in a minute. Perfect. Perfect way to intro the show. I think so. <laughs> That's what I want. More of that. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to The Struggle with Candace Thompson. I am Candace Thompson, and as I'm pulling up my strapless bra, which is a struggle in itself, dear God, ladies, and I don't even have big breasts. Like, I don't know women who, who have nice pendulous bosoms. I don't know. You probably can't rock the strapless bra that I'm sorry, but none of us should because they're <laughs> trash. Anyway, I call I call at least one thing trash maybe multiple times in one episode, oh, so just also that. be prepared for that. I've show. talked to you before. <laughs> Have I ever called you trash? No, I don't think so. I, but, Ooh, but not to your face. No, I mean, right. but also you've called men generally trash. So that is correct. I'm in that category. That is sounds like me. Yeah. That's, uh-huh. Sounds exactly like something I would have said. <laughs> 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 you guys, thank you for tuning in to my loyal listeners and to my new fans. Thank you so much. Uh, the struggle is a podcast where I invite my hilarious friends on, and we talk about things that we struggle with because being an adult sucks most of the time. So we're here to make you laugh about it and hopefully bring some joy to your struggles. Now. If you have not subscribed to The Struggle, I highly recommend that. Uh, <laughs> we're on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Videos are up there if you haven't subscribed there. Also, rate and review us on iTunes. And please tell somebody about The Struggle. If you're listening to this regularly and you haven't told somebody, I mean, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, come on. Get, yeah, get with it. Guys, come on. That's just what happens now. You tell people about stuff you enjoy. All right? So do that. Now, you can find me on social media, Jokes by Candace, and my show is CandaceThompsonComedy.com. Also, I'm going to do a little plug here for uh, everybody to watch Lights Out with David Spade on Comedy Central, a show that I'm writing on and uh, have appeared on. Uh, so if you guys <laughs> are tired of talking politics all the time and you want to spend a little half hour feeling just uh, just feeling lots of jokes and stupid stuff. <laughs> Watch Lights Out with David Spade, because we're pretty silly on that show. Now, <laughs> I'm going to introduce my hilarious guest for the day. I'm so happy he could be here today. Oh, fuck. I was supposed to, because I need you to pronounce mm-hmm. your last name for me every oh, time. Oh, is that true? Okay. Yeah, because I this is how I try to remind myself. I'm like, his name is Joe, and his last name sounds kind of like Koala, but mm-hmm. it's got a Z in it. Sure. Koalza? No. Koalzala. Koalz. Qu- qua? And then if I start it with qua, could, qua. You, could you finish it out? Quazala? Yeah. Quazala. There it is. <sighs> God damn. We just met. <laughs> we just met <laughs> no, today. No, <laughs> what's sad is that we've met. I know. We've known each other for a bit. Um, well, almost a year now. Mm-hmm. I guess in October was when Big Sky was. Yeah, sure. um, but then I was just I was just telling Haley, I was like, I don't see I don't see him that much. But when I do, he makes me smile. It's always it's so nice to see you, yeah. Yeah. I always am like, oh, thank God Candace is here. No, no stop. Yeah. Do you, do you have similar feelings? I don't know. I, yes, I have similar feelings. It's, it's that thing of like, you, we do a lot of comedy shows, right? We do. And not everyone is fun. No. But you are fun. <laughs> I, I always have a good time when you're around. Same. Yeah. Oh, jo- okay, first, before I forget, plug your social media. Oh, yeah, for sure. So you can follow me on Twitter at Joe K, Joe K, uh, Instagram at Joe Kwa, J O E K W A. Um, should I do dates now yes if you have shows (laughs) yeah i do have i'm I'm doing a little mini tour i'm going to be in pittsburgh on august 23rd at the arcade theater philadelphia at the good good comedy uh club on the 24th and then i will be in new york uh 26 27 28 uh at butter boy stevie and comedians you should know butter boy yeah what is that that's uh marianne ways's show oh Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. met Marianne and uh, yeah, Big Sky. Uh, yeah, Apar- yeah, yeah. Aparna and Joe Firestone. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, uh, well, they let me in. It's butter and I'm vegan. Is that a problem? Oh, yeah. You should bring that up uh, and then it'll be a problem. <laughs> it's always a problem. Uh-huh. Last night I, I had a set at the comedy store and I said, I have, I'm working on a bit about veganism. And I was like, yeah, so I'm trying new things this year. So I switched over to being vegan. And then... Uh, somebody, I said, is there anybody in the audience who's vegan or vegetarian? And then somebody was like, no! Oh, weird. <laughs> you got a clapping. negative clap? <laughs> Usually people just throw lentils at me, or they throw like some type of sprout or some mm-hmm. shit. Um, yeah, a bean. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good, I'm not, it's not well-received, veganism. And it depends on where you are. Yeah. Comedy store, I would say, prob- definitely not going to be received well. Where would you say? But if you're, you know, if you're at 
you know, if you do good heroin. Uh, yeah, I was going to say like one of those bookstore shows. East yeah. Side, uh, Hipster, LA. yes. Alt comedy shows. UC, at UCB. I will be embraced more. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you know what? I don't think I've talked about it in those rooms yet. I've talked about oh, it in em- like they'll, mainstream clubs. They'll embrace you. You're right. Yeah. You know what? Guys, I'm just going to. We gonna... fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at uh, any bookstore Cafe, starting. Yeah. Right. Uh, starting this week. That's where I am. Now. Perfect. I will like to say, because I already said this opening the show, that I fell in love with you in, uh, were we in Billings, Montana? Mm-hmm. That's where we, we were, were in for Billings, Big Sky. A place we will never return. <laughs> Talk about being difficult for vegans. Jesus. Yeah, oh, my God. Imagine trying to do a vegan chunk of material in <laughs> Billings, Montana. <laughs> People looking at you like you're. No, they would probably yeah. eat me after the show. Mm-hmm. Now, let's yeah. eat her. Good God. Yeah, it was. So we. That's a comedy festival that we did last year in October, and I, I, I. They fed us. Constantly. They did bring yeah. food, and but this. I just remember this one time specifically. It was me, and there's another comic. Do you remember Alex Falcone? Yeah, of course, from Portland. From Portland, he was vegetarian as well, and I wasn't even vegan yet. I was still just vegetarian. Yeah, right. And uh, that day they brought in Popeyes. Was it Popeyes? Oh my god! Yeah, mm-hmm. they just brought a vat of Popeyes and the mac and cheese. Yeah, and uh, Kira Soltanovich was like. You guys know that Candace and Alex don't eat meat, right? And they were like, "Yeah, we know." <laughs> and then you were and then able proceeded to proceeded to do nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, were there must was there a side at the very least? I mean, at that time there was you could eat the mac and cheese if you were just vegetarian. I, yeah, which right now I wouldn't be able to, but and I try Here's the thing as I tried it and let me tell you. <laughs> it was trash. Yeah. See? There we go. It put, was it, trash. put it on the board. There's it another was... trash for you. <laughs> The mac and cheese from I mean, Popeyes. But here's the thing is that I would assume that it would be better than like Kraft mac and cheese, it, right? It's coming from technically a restaurant. Technically, technically, <laughs> right. I don't know if it, I wouldn't yeah. say good restaurant. But, you know, a restaurant nonetheless. I, I think it checks off all, like, at least mm-hmm. three of the restaurant boxes, right? Sure, there's a building you can go to. Yep. There's a website you there's can go seating, to. There's seating. And they have there's, food there that people yeah, prepare. I mean, yes. It, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just that alone should put it on another level, you would think, even if it's just, you know, a minor adjustment. Right. But, nah. but no, did you try? Do you remember? I don't, I don't know really if it made remember. an impact on you no. the same way it I did mean, me. I was probably eating the chicken because I was allowed to. Yeah. And their chicken is fine. Yeah. I, I've heard their chicken is fine. And I think I hear that their biscuits are decent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, kind of hard to fuck up a biscuit, but. Uh, oh, I've. You have. I've, oh, I haven't, but I've had a you, dry yes, ass biscuit for before. Sure. No, yeah. th- their biscuits are, are <laughs> solid. Well, this is a good, a bad time to announce that we've been picked up as a, we have a sponsor of Popeye's for this podcast. Yeah. Uh, uh, about that. So, honestly, I feel like what we said so far about Popeye's is an endorsement based on what they normally deal with. Popeye's. Popeye's. It's food. It's, it's technically a restaurant. <laughs> Question mark? Yeah. <laughs> Shrug. Ah, so, that's where, that's where we met at Big Sky, mm-hmm. and that's where our love story started. Now, you... <laughs> I, do you remember the first thing I said to you? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I will never forget it. I'm glad you didn't forget either. And it, it, it uh, deals with a struggle that I have, which is I have a hard time approaching people. I have a hard time uh, being social. Up, uh, kind of uh, my most of my festival because I, I did a good amount of comedy festivals uh, last year. Yeah. And most of my festival experiences is it's broken into parts, which is the first half where I'm scared to talk to anybody. I don't know anybody, and I'm scared. <laughs> And then the second <laughs> half where something is able to kind of like break me out of my shell and then I have yeah. a good time and then I make a lot of friends and then it's fine. And then it's fine. Yeah. So and that's you, a you recurring helped, thing. You helped to kind of break me out a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, I think you very significant. Because I believe you told me, and I don't know if you have the verbatim. Yeah, uh, no, I don't remember the exact verbiage I used. I thought you said something along the lines of, uh, you look like you're going to kill me. <laughs> that. Sounds like, yeah. but yeah, and as I was describing you to Haley before you walked in the door, uh-huh. I was like, I was telling, I was like, you don't understand, like this guy, every, when I watch his Instagram videos, I just laugh, I crack up, and then just your stand-up makes me laugh in general, and I was just, he's just so silly, like, and my, if if I were to just use one word to describe what sense of humor I, I really just speaks to me on so many levels, uh-huh. is just silliness. Yeah. I, I love silliness. Like, we had Kevin Nealon on the show this week oh, with sure. Spade. 
and his sense of humor, like I just couldn't stop laughing every time he spoke mm-hmm. because he's so absurd. He's and absurd, so, but very dry, but super yes, silly. Yes, his delivery, it's like, and he's just witty, and you guys are similar to me in that. Like, oh, And sure. so I was just like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I immediately was like, I got I to gotta talk to this guy, number one, because I'm scared of him. <laughs> well, I mean, because you were scared of my your disposition. Eyes. Your eyes. Yeah. You have very intense I do. eyes. I have, to, I have to be careful. Yeah. So, and, I, and when I said that to you, I was like, your eyes, I said, you look like you're going to kill somebody. And your eyes, I, I don't know if I said this or not, but I, I thought it. I was like, your eyes are very menacing. Yeah. I mean, that tracks. <laughs> They're just intense. I know. And when I said that to you, you were like, yeah, I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. So, like, this has been an ongoing thing for yeah. you with just the intensity in your in your yeah. general face area. And I think it's something, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I think it's something I affected a little bit because uh, as a person who isn't, like, physically very imposing. Yeah. I, at a young age, didn't want people to mess with me. So to kind of have a look on your face uh, that's like a little bit scary. You mastered it. Was it was a defense mechanism, uh, and then it's just I I have tried to undo it a little bit, but I think there's things that are just kind of uh, inherent there that I can't right. fully undo. <laughs> but I still I mean there is also something I don't think it's conscious, but like the idea of you would rather look intimidating than look like a a, a doofus. Punk. Right, yeah, or like, like someone who could just, you could fuck, y- like yeah. easily walk over mm-hmm. or take advantage of. Yeah, yeah, Absol- yeah, absolutely, that's, yeah. And you know what's interesting is that I not, I don't think facially let people know that about me, but th- I've talked to, and like there are people in the room with me right now who tell me I'm terrifying. <laughs> but that's only after they've gotten to know me. Uh-huh. <laughs> like if they didn't know me, they'd be like, oh, there's this chick. But then they're like, Candace, we could never date because you scare the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like that. I think that that has just come from that same place of like growing up. Like I, I, I felt like maybe I needed to put on an air of like don't fuck with me because yeah. I felt so vulnerable all the time. Mm-hmm. And now I don't even realize it anymore. It's just part of who I. It's my DNA now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I think that's something you kind of got to do, though, especially if, if we talk about the business that we're in and we want respect. For sure. I mean, you kind of And as to... women. Yes. Y- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For us gals, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> what if this whole sound like you were a woman? Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, it could be. <laughs> Who's to say? I don't and identify. Nowadays, with, you don't. You don't no. know anymore. Uh, I identify as male, but I sympathize with the female plight. That, that, oh, you're trying to get all types of pussy. Mm. Well, you have a girlfriend, That's though, how you right? Do it. No, I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Oh, I thought you had a girlfriend. Why no. did I, th- I, mean, I think I just saw that video of you with a girlfriend, and I, it was so real <laughs> that I was like, I think that's his real girlfriend. Well, that's uh, that's uh, what a compliment that my acting convinced you. No, it felt, it did feel. I, I really was like, oh, I wonder if this is his girlfriend, and they were like, let's just film this moment of us together. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you. That no, it was dope. Well, yeah, it's just a scripted scene with two actors uh, at the height of their craft. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> No, you had oh, also didn't you? You had a Comedy Central, yeah. Half I, uh, hour, right? It, that's coming out in November. Uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah. I wanted to say that at the top, and then I forgot. But yeah, we'll say we'll remind not, people yeah. at the end. It's in the can, as they say. In the can. Yeah. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> you know, you don't understand. I'm so excited for you. Oh, thank you. Um, so before we get into your struggle, mm-hmm. I know we've we've uh, touched on a couple yeah. of light ones, but I uh, my struggle today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Over the past month or so, well, just to mo- this morning, I fucking cut my un- my armpit shape. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Can I? I'm going to show you. No, please. Go ahead. I'll take a look. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. See? You can see uh, blood. It's red. Can you guys get in there? <laughs> can, you, can you see? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who doesn't want to see my armpit? I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of perverts out there that would pay <laughs> good money. In fact, you're giving it away for free. So Why do they have to be perverts, perverts to want to see my armpits, Joe? I think you just <laughs> answered your own question. <laughs> why, why can't there be... just be some guys yeah, why do or they... girls? I shouldn't shame. You're right. I shouldn't kink shame the people who want to see your bloody exactly. armpit. <laughs> They're not perverts. Oh, they I are... forgot it was bloody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that that's kind of what you're showing. That does take it to another level yeah. of weirdness. Yeah. But no, no. I, I mean, I'm on, I'm on your train now. It's not weird. Uh, <laughs> you know, people are entitled to like what they like, be into what they're into. Yeah, no you know. No shame, no judgment. 
Yeah. But what then, I'm saying is you are giving it away for free. And I feel like if you're I, you're right, I should cash, set up a, a, a Patreon Bitcoin, <laughs> some type of yeah, cryptocurrency that transfer. I don't understand. Can That's I, probably a good idea. Can I tell you that I watched a whole documentary on Bitcoin? Still don't know what it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> Still don't Yikes. understand it. How it yeah. works. A uh, whole documentary, huh? A whole documentary now took that, nothing that, away from that it. That means two things. Uh, I'm one of two stupid. things. Either you're very stupid, I'm stupid, or the documentary was bad. I'm willing to say the documentary was bad. I'm also willing to say that I'm stupid. Maybe a little bit of both. A little. The two are not mutually exclusive, Joe. <laughs> Let's just go there. Let's just say that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm willing to accept that there are just things I will never understand. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's not tangible, right. like Bitcoin is not tangible to me. Like, Correct. so I don't understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't understand how yeah. it exists. I don't understand I th how. I think all you have to, um, for me, all you, ha I, all I understand is that like you can invest in it, and then you can watch a number go up and down, and that's pretty easy to understand so it's just like stocks yeah in a sense but there is a, some other component that is very confusing about what it is mm -hmm. the mining of it See, like, that's the part that yeah I don't understand. no i mean and that's very uh, understandable because I, I don't get that either yeah see yeah no i understand what it is but i, mean, I don't understand is... how it works is what i guess i should say right yeah and, and that is fair that's fair yeah, yeah. good good <laughs> should right. i invest in it is now my next question to you mm. You know, since you're I, a Bitcoin expert, I, I am an expert now. I I do I have a a very negligible amount of money. In do it. you? It's a small amount of money, but I I put in some after I won a game show. Wait, what game show were I you won, on? I uh, won a show called Idiot Test, which is on Ben Glee. Uh, we Glee's. had him on the who's yeah. running for president. Right, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I was on uh, I was on that game show a few years ago, uh, and I won. I can I it. ask? You're not going to tell me no. how much. Can I ask? I, I mean, it's on TV. I won. Uh, me and Sam Wiles were on it together, and we won ten thousand dollars. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I had a little bit. Of, I had a little bit of thrown around money. So I yeah. So I put all of it in Bitcoin. I put some of it in Bitcoin, <laughs> and uh, it is now. It it has uh, accrued some value. But it also went very down at a certain point. Which is what the markets do yeah. in general. It went. It was really going up right after I put it in. That's kind of why I put it in because it was trending upward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really went up, and then it crashed down. It was down for probably a year, but it has it has crawled its way back up. So, I feel like it, with those things, and again, I don't know anything about Bitcoin, but I do know a little bit about like investments and stuff because I used to. I hope so. I <laughs> did have a Series Six and Sixty Three license. <laughs> Oh, okay. I did. Yeah. Uh, I worked at a life insurance agency for a while, but anyway, yeah, it's a it's a waiting game. Like, cause mm -hmm. it's gonna do this, but don't like just cause it goes down, guys. Don't pull your money out because you get scared. It's just what the market does. It'll come back up. Right. So, yeah, if anything, leave it in there. Yeah. When it goes down, put it in. Yes, that's when you're supposed to put it in. But if you have something in there and then it goes down, just leave it in and just wait for it to come right. back up. Especially if you don't like need it. Yeah. Back. Yeah. People panic though, especially if it's a lot of money. They panic. So mm -hmm. I was like, just leave it in there. It'll get. It'll be. It'll be yeah. back. It'll yeah. Be okay. I don't know why I'm telling you to have faith in our government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not the. Wait a second. That's not the. <laughs> What's going on not here? Not the general theme of uh, the show, but. But oh wait, so I scratched my armpit. Yes, right. We got so derailed. Yeah, we sure Bitcoin. did. Anyway, uh, back to your. Uh, I scratched my armpit. So that was. <laughs> And what's funny is that, so one of the guys in the room with me this week, Connor, do you know Connor McSpadden? Mm -hmm, sure. Great guy, super funny. Uh, he, for a stupid bit we did for an opening in the show, he had to shave his chest. Okay. And then just for shits, he also shaved his armpits. And then afterwards, he was just like, this burns. <laughs> and I was like, welcome to our world. I was like, we have to do this. Yeah. We don't have to, but who? Culturally, the pressure is on to, to for, do that. For, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Our whole entire, like, leg. It's messed up. Snatch. Mm -hmm. Happy trail. Armpits. Like, but here's the thing, Joe, is that I know I could stop, mm -hmm. but I prefer the aesthetic of hairless. Yeah. I know. I mean, we're trained that way. And but and I even kind of wish like men didn't have body hair too. It's gross. Like I super gross. I don't like. It's not something that I really care for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that that might not be popular opinion, but I would but you prefer wanna, you want a smooth hairless I like a, man. Not it doesn't, it doesn't not have a, to be not a not a hair on his whole body. So Candace, you like gay men? We've talked about this before. Head to toe. No hair, no <laughs> eyebrows. I like full on alopecia. Yeah, powder. Yeah, powder. Nice reference powder. to what was that like nineteen ninety eight or some yeah, shit like was, that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. 
full on, yeah. I like, I, I don't need, look, I don't, and here's the thing is I don't want a fully hairless man. Of course. There's like a happy median. Where where you don't want a bear. Correct. Uh, but you also, you don't want a baby. Correct. <laughs> Something in between bear and baby. Correct. What is that thing? Boo-boo? <laughs> from Yogi? Hey, Boo-Boo. Yeah. Was that him? Is that how he yeah, talks? for sure. Was he from, was Her- he like Italian? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Was he Italian? <laughs> no. Yogi the Bear was not Italian. Not Yogi. Oh, wait. What was that? Well, that was yeah. how, that Yogi, was was how Yogi spoke? Boo-Boo. Yeah. That's not even tracking for me right now. Because for some reason, I'm picturing Boo Boo talking like that. But yeah, it was Yogi that spoke like that. Because he was talking to Boo Boo. Yeah. Hey, Boo Boo. Yeah. But like, but no, I'm just, because that's you not think... the voice I attached with Yogi for some reason. So you are, you are like conflating, because Yogi the Bear, you were going to talk like this. And it had like an almost an old uh, yeah. What is that? Like uh, street. <laughs> uh, I because I, he's model. I think he might be model after Art Carney, who was like yeah, a, yeah, a TV yeah. actor back yeah, in the day from, uh, from Honeymooners. From yeah, just kind of talking like this. Hey Fred. Hey, yeah. you know, hey. Uh, so he wasn't from Jersey or Brooklyn. I, I, I think it's an East Coast. It is an East Coast <laughs> thing. It is for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you thought you for a second thought Yogi Yogi was going. Uh, hey, a boo boo. <laughs> I'm making a pizza in front of the pig. In my it. head, I was picturing Sopranos Italian. Right, yeah. Not that kind of, not okay. authentic Italian. <laughs> I was picturing like a mobster. Okay, so that that's a, that's a little closer. Yeah, yeah. like a Jersey mob uh-huh. mafia dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not far from it, yeah. I guess, in, in <laughs> retrospect. But to say, he, it, to say is Yogi Bear Italian is uh, pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, we I think we're gonna have to wait till he gets uh, his twenty three and me results back before and we then can we can really suss out what's going on exactly. uh, ethnically with Yogi. <laughs> Precisely. <Yeah. laughs> I had another struggle, but we spent enough time on too, me. Too much time. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know the shaved armpit thing was going to spiral into Bitcoin really? and Yogi Bear impressions. It inspired a lot. It did. <laughs> and I'm so happy. <laughs> I knew you were a great pick for this. Yeah. I just knew I felt it in my bones. That's beautiful. <laughs> Now, let's get into why mm-hmm. we came here. Oh, my God. Yeah. What are you struggling with? My God. Uh, so uh, this, is, this feels very lame to admit, uh, but I really struggle with getting out of bed. Are you, is that depression related? No. Oh. It's like, it's, yeah, I know, because uh, the uh, kind of standard yeah. Having having trouble getting out of bed is usually depression related, yeah. which I'm very lucky that I don't struggle with. But uh, it's almost it's like a combination of like laziness and like something physiological. No, and you know what? I'm so happy you say this because I love sleep. Me too. And for a long for it just kind of changed, and I think with my diet, it it kind of helped with it. Okay. I think like. I just have more energy now, but I I hate waking up in the morning. Awful. Even when I've had a full night's sleep, I'm just like, it, I just want to stay here. It hurts. It, it's like painful. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Did you did you have? I had I really struggled with it when I had to wake up early for school growing up. Well, I have to get up early now. Right, being in this, yeah, we got to be basically. in the office at eight thirty on tape days, eight thirty in the morning. Awful. And you know, for a comedian, like we're out late, mm-hmm. so it's a huge. I had to like cut back on shows at night. Yeah, especially the late night ones because I know that I have to get up in the morning. And it's but even you're you're, set, you're just not adjust. You know, you're supposed to be on a set pattern for yeah. when you go to bed and mm-hmm. when you wake up. And to disrupt that really fucks with you physically. Yes, and so that's what I'm experiencing experiencing right now. But when I was a kid, I do also remember loving sleep. Like my, oh my sister God. would be the early one. She would be up super early, waking everybody else a up. Freak, if I may. No, she, and she listens to this, and I want her to hear this. You're a freak. <laughs> Sorry. She was the one that would be at like sleepovers, waking everybody else up. Bitch. Awful. Terrible. I am 12. I yeah. need this right now. <laughs> Don't take this from me. Right. Like, what are you doing? And, but I, my parents have pictures of me sleeping because I would just, I would take naps in the middle of the day after I'd had a full night sleep. Mm-hmm. They have pictures of me in weird positions sleeping. Hell yeah. It's just my default. Like, I just want to be in bed yeah, all the time. I get it. And it's probably because you're sleep deprived. Is it? But I feel like I even so. when I wasn't, even now that I'm thinking when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I feel like I just w- always wanted to be asleep. 
I, th- I think that might have to do with the fact that you were sleep deprived more than you thought. I don't know. That's I, my thought is that you like, think you're sleep deprived. Um, well, the thing is, I get I get the sleep that I need, uh, but and then there's there's just other things going on. So here, my I love sleep, like you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I so like good. I really <laughs> uh, I really value it. Yes, and I think it is something that is that we dismiss in America for sure, and in a, an unhealthy way. Oh yeah. I think sleep is as important as diet and, and water exer- and exercise. For sure it is. Uh, and the idea that like the most successful people sleep two hours a night or four hours a night, I think that is a death sentence. I think that is extremely unhealthy. Right. And I hate that we uh, kind of in this, if I may, capitalist society, it has become uh, something to aspire to. Like, sure. oh, I don't even sleep. I get up it's and bra- I, I go. It's brag worthy. Yeah. Awful. I think it's it's so unhealthy, and I hate that there's a stigma to sleep. Yeah. Well, you know the people on like social media that are like hashtag Hustle. no days yeah. off, hashtag beast mode, <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like rise and, and grind. That's my. <laughs> I forgot about that one. But that's the one. But that, that's yeah. the one that makes me so angry when I see that. And you know who does it? It's not even people that are like. Successful? People that we respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's always like... Yeah, people who are trying to convince us that they're worth anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but sleep is so <laughs> important. A hashtag. And our... Yeah, w- w- in our culture, we really... Uh, it's it's a shame that we stigmatize people who get the sleep they need. We stigmatize them as lazy. Yes. And... Uh, and like, it's a necessity. It's such a necessity, and I think it's a smart thing to do to get your fucking sleep. I have always... You don't understand. Like, and it, this is how... This is how deep it goes. When someone calls you when you're asleep. Oh, my God. Yes. And you pick up the phone. You, and they, and we, they always can tell. <laughs> and they, then we pretend like we were awake. We it's cannot <laughs> admit that we were asleep. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I've had people, like very sweet people, who like get it and they call and they're like, oh, my God, did I wake you? I'm so and sorry. Like, no, no, no. And then you're always like, oh, no way. No, I was I've, fully awake. I've been up for a while. And it's like you're fooling no one, but I, there's there is that that shame. thing mentally where you just can't. Yeah, you're you're shamed. You can't let anybody know that you were no resting. Way. Oh, I was I, I was just I've been up. I'm, I was just going for a jog. Oh, you got me in the middle of my jog. What's going on? <laughs> so, like your voice, you haven't even cleaned the, cleared the phlegm no. out of your oh, throat. It's awful, and it's it's so apparent. It's so apparent. So Even obvious. when you think sometimes the phone rings and you're like asleep and you're like, okay, <coughs> it okay, doesn't I'm work. Ma, 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 it doesn't work. And then you're like, Whoa. it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't they work. Your voice. There have been days where I don't know if you do. You live by yourself? No, I do not. So, because I know it's different when you have people in your apartment, but like, so even so, if you're not even like necessarily cool with that person, you can go the whole day without talking to somebody. Yes. And mm-hmm. as comedians, when we work at night, it's like that's that's happened before. I've gone a whole day <laughs> yeah, until I've said yeah. something on stage uh-huh. at ten o'clock Which at night. Is, yeah, and uh, it's like, you hey guys, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and a moth comes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hey guys, sorry, I just yeah. realized I haven't spoken since yesterday. Yikes! But that um, happens. But yeah, no, there. And I, I am so happy we're talking about this because it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like sleep is so good. We need it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I don't think this podcast is going to change anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. And even when, so I uh, have the fortune of having a comedian schedule where I don't really have to wake up for anything, right? Yes. And so I can kind of let myself sleep mm-hmm. uh, and get the sleep that I need. But even after, like, I wake up naturally mm-hmm. and, like, I feel fine. I don't feel jostled from, yeah. from a deep sleep or anything. <laughs> I still I spend Want more. at least an hour on my phone in my bed. No, because it, and it's you're so comfortable. Like just there, there's this there's hurdle. Nothing better. There's this hurdle of like getting out of this extremely comfortable setting that feels so. It feels like you're in the goddamn the womb. womb. Yes, I think that's what. And when were you born? When's your birthday? May. I'm trying to figure out if it's like if certain people were born certain times of the year oh. or like if it's like an astrological something where people. It's probably genetic. It's probably genetic. Uh, but yeah. And like to get to leave that that comfort. It, and when you especially when you don't necessarily have, have to, to. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I spend way too much time just on my phone for at least like I need 
at least an hour. Hour to to just to go on Twitter, just to look at emails and get your mind mentally prepared to texts. for the rest of the day. Like, oh, I have to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. But and it does suck. And it's like because I really don't have to. Like legit, you could work from your bed, just get on your laptop yeah. and start doing shit on there. But that's not. That's a slippery slope. Yeah. It, to get back under the covers. And just like never leave. And <laughs> just uh, constantly be Where's in your bed. Joe? Yeah. Six months later. Oh, he lives in his bed. He weighs 500 pounds now. We have to airlift him out of his bed. <laughs> now, is, uh, wait, okay, so what time do you say you normally wake up? Like, when, when do you? Give or take noon. Jeez, okay. Yeah. Sometimes now that's earlier, going to bed sometimes when? Sometimes later. So that's so I'm also I've been struggling with letting myself just go to sleep. Yeah. I've just been on my phone a lot yeah. before I go to bed. So it's like you know sometimes so like if I get to bed around 2 or something then I'm probably not falling asleep till 3 maybe 4. And yes, then it's like then I'm waking right. up at 11 or yeah, 12. Yeah. That sounds about right. I yeah. woke up I went to bed last night 3:30 going mm-hmm. on 4. I started wa- I was binge watching Bodyguard on Netflix. Do you, have you seen that? Okay. It's the guy from uh, not the body. Not not Wendy Houston I was and binge Kevin Costner. Watching, someone said I heard someone say binge watching uh, in reference to a movie the other day, and that, I was like, that's you not what that is. Don't no, you, can't. you were just watching a movie? Yeah, you can binge watch like unless they were watching sequels. it over it on a loop. I oh. guess, but that's not also that's Why something would else. You do that. That's not binge watching. That's a uh, some sort of mental. Uh, yeah, you hangout. might. <laughs> I think that's what that is. Yeah, no, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound healthy. The only movie you could do that with is Coming to America. But it, sure. Because it's so funny. But uh, I was binge watching that. I tried to start binge watching it before I had my show last night at the store. Okay. Fell asleep Uh-oh. while I was trying to binge watch. So then I went and did my set and then came back and tr- finished it. All right. And I completed it. There you go. Yeah, but I didn't. F- I I didn't go to bed till almost four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's that that'll happen. But then I woke up today and I felt like it was way too early. I woke up at like. Yeah, you needed. Well, what's, see, this is what I my my th- kind of theory of being sleep deprived. We should still be asleep technically. Yes, all of us always. <laughs> <laughs> it's six o'clock and we should still be asleep. You uh, all this week uh, you wake up uh, for your job. Sick. I get up at six, and here's the issue with me too, Joe, is that I get up at six thirty. Mm -hmm. On tape days, because we have to be in the studio and, like, uh, writing at 8.30. So, technically, in our seats, laptops open at 8.25, Mm -hmm. because when we start pitching topics and stuff like that and riffing, we need to be alert. Not just awake, but alert Uh, and working. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Brains functionally and being funny at 8.30 in the morning, which is something I've never had to do before. Yeah. And so, I've now adjusted to that. Here we are. Nine months in, and I finally adjust it. No, we're in like two months of us right, being in the room, right, right. and I finally like getting like I'm I'm functioning at that time. But I get up at six thirty because I have when I was a, when I was waking up when I whenever I felt like it before I got this gig, I could wake up like you said we wake up whenever we because there was no set schedule. No. But I was making I make for breakfast. I have a very intense smoothie that I make. <laughs> something's got to keep you uh, alert, right? You gotta keep. You gotta get you going in the morning. So, you, what do you put in this smoothie? Oh my god, Joe! Because I'm. Are you? Are you? You're <laughs> making it. You're I'm. It's a blending it. Mm-hmm. I have a ninja. Okay. Which I hear I should not have gotten a ninja. I got the ninja because I don't know if you've heard about. You've heard about the Vitamix, but it's like yeah. five hundred dollars. Right. So I was like, I don't. it's all a scam. But I was like, yeah, I don't really need that. So mm-hmm. I was like, what's the next thing, best thing? And I got the Ninja, okay. which was not cheap, but it right. was also not $500. And I was like, but I can, this is fine. I'm going to use it a lot. So, and I'm fine with it. And it does the job. But then my friend, Gina Yashere, very funny comic mm-hmm. from, who British comic, she was like, it, the plastic is not BPA free. That's that chemical that like apparently. Kills you. <laughs> 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 on a seri- more serious note. <laughs> this will be the last uh, episode of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, this is it, guys. <laughs> because of my smoothies. Good God. Yeah, the smoothies the smoothies that are supposed to be helping my health You're killing you. are killing me at the same time. Good God. But the, I don't let them sit in the plastic. It's like I blend and then I pour. Yeah, so it's course. not in there very long. No, no, no. Right. You're fine. So I think she was Five terrifying me for no rule. reason. Right. <laughs> with smoothies. Yeah, with smoothies. If you and, drop your smoothie. Poisonous on the plastic. <laughs> Good Lord. And also on the floor, if you can slurp it up within yeah, five seconds. Yeah, you're fine. 
There's totally no five-second rule with cheese, by the way. There's no five-second rule at all. Well, you know, that's true. But <laughs> especially mean? cheese. Not with tacky <laughs> things that pick up. Like, oh, if you drop a slice of cheese has, on the floor. It feels like there's a li- almost a little adhesive. Yeah, it's on the picking food. up. Yeah, everything. <laughs> I mean, if you want to clean your floor, just cheese slices. <laughs> Just put and cheese then, slices on your feet. Yeah, and then you'll be, yeah, you got a clean floor. <laughs> Who needs a Holy. Roomba? No, cheese, uh, <laughs> cheese shoes. Get cheese shoes. Now back to my smoothie, my Please. life-changing smoothie. So it's intense because I don't do dairy, so I make okay. my own hemp milk. And that doesn't that take very long. Ob- that sounds obscene. It's, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it doesn't make take very long. Make my own long. hemp milk. Yeah, it doesn't take long in theory, but it is an extra. It's extra steps. So yeah. I, I make my own hemp milk, and then I. I put, need you to explain that. Oh, it's easy. Just hemp seeds. <laughs> okay. Get hemp seeds from. It's super easy. Get hemp seeds from the any whole like Whole Foods or health food store, yeah. and then I scoop out however much amount you want to make. So for my smoothies. I just want two cups of hemp milk. So okay. I take two tablespoons of, t- of the seeds. And then I take two cups of spring water, put that in there, okay. a little vanilla extract, a little sea salt, okay. and some date syrup. There you go. Blend it up, and you got homemade hemp milk. That sounds nice. It's delicious. Yeah. And it's not going to, and it makes you feel great. Like you're not going to get gassy. It's great. It's fantastic. So then I put my banana, because you cannot make a smoothie without a banana. Of course not. I, if you. Hand me a smoothie and it does not have fa- a foundation of banana. I will throw s- it in your face. I will smack it on the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had a banana list smoothie? I don't think so. I don't think they even make them because uh, yeah, they know that's, that's why you, it's yeah. it's insanity. Be foolish. Yeah. So there's that, and then I throw frozen fruit in there, mango, some berries sometimes. Mm-hmm, sure. But then this is where it gets complicated. Is I have superfood powders, like acai powder. Mm-hmm. I do like spirulina. Superfood power Super. sounds like such a <laughs> fucking scam that you would buy on the internet. Like that you'd it see does. Uh, you know, a pop-up ad. Be. be like, it's the superfood powder that they don't want you to have. You're like, oh, I got to get those. <laughs> I want that. Okay, I need the, the superfood powder. <laughs> this must powder. be what Superman takes. Yeah. This is going to give me superpowers. So you put in your superpowder. Yeah, there's uh, so many. Maca root, uh, acai, <laughs> spirulina. Chlorella. You, uh, it appears to me that you take care of yourself so well that maybe you're not. <laughs> like maybe maybe I'm not what? Maybe it's going all a the person? way back around. Oh, that I'm that healthy? Not, yeah. <laughs> I'm not like, healthy. You're like, I'm so healthy that, that I'm only a... eating tree bark. And you're like, well, is that, wait, I think you've gone First all the way all, back Joe, around. <laughs> no one eats tree bark. You sound ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my special seeds and powders. I eat burdock root. That's completely <laughs> different. <laughs> Oh, no. Ah, but you see why my, that's my morning, is mm-hmm. I have to make time, and I also potion, meditate. You make your potion. I may have a potion, but I also meditate also in the okay, morning, that's, and that's not that's something wise. I'm willing to compromise. I just can't. But it's shorter. Like on like today, I meditated for like 40 minutes, whereas during the week, I'll do like maybe five, 10 to 15. Yeah, just, I mean, you're, you're not made of time. No, I'm not. So you got to really just uh, do it. <laughs> Get it in. <laughs> as it, as it, <laughs> As it goes, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's the thing is, then, like, you do, you have this routine. You're waking up super early. When you go into bed, when you wake up at six, six thirty. I've st- I stopped because when I put in my avails for the comedy store, it's usually late night spots. So I stopped doing that during the week. I saved my comedy store yeah, spots for the weekend for yeah. sure. But if it's an early show, I'll still do those. If it's like nine, ten o'clock, mm-hmm. I'll do those. And but I try to go to bed no later than twelve thirty, one o'clock. And Ooh. then to get up at 6.30 in the morning. So you're, uh, yeah, you've got roughly two and a half to three hours a night that you are, uh, of sleep that you need that you're not getting. And that, I think that accumulates. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But and you can tell because you, do you nap when you come home? No. Okay, so then on the weekend, you really need I to catch up. I should just hibernate. In a sense, yeah, because you, it's, it's. I, catching up to you. I was told that you can never catch up with, well, not told. I don't know if anyone told me. Maybe I read it somewhere, but I heard on the streets. <laughs> I was out there throwing dice <laughs> with, the, with the crew, and they were like, you can never catch up on the sleep you need. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Snake eyes. I was like, thanks, Leroy. <laughs> I, but I hear that that's what it is. Like, you can't, once you miss it, it's gone. No, you can catch up. You can? That's Your body it will do it. That's why when you aren't getting enough sleep on the weekends, you sleep a lot. And your body wants to sleep a lot. It's catching up. But when am I fully caught up? 
<laughs> Joe. When you go to sleep, I think it's when you go to sleep, and then in eight hours, you naturally wake up. So I could make up for, let's say I've been not getting enough sleep for the past 15 years, which is possible. It is possible, but I would also, I would argue that over that, the course I've of that time, there have been, yeah, times. you've been catching up. Your body, because your body won't let you Right. Catch Remember up. that day, Candace, where you slept for three days? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that day where you slept for three days? Or when there's things like, uh, when there's things like napping and, you know, uh, catching up and oversleeping and all that stuff accumulates, because uh, that's your body. Just it, telling it you, like, it. you're it's shutting like, down. Yeah, exactly. Like you're gonna catch up. Okay. Because mm-hmm. at one point... When I was working a day job and doing the open mic grind, and then I was, yeah, I was, there were night, most times during the week I was getting home at like 2 a.m. and then having to wake up at 6.30. Awful. It's the worst. My God. How, how, how dare we make, uh, normalize this behavior? No, I know, but I had no choice. I know. That's what I'm saying. But like, it should have been people. Yeah. It, this is what we sacrifice yes. for the things that you want. And, and and it's okay and it's but it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. And I'm I'm so happy you're advocating for I, sleep. I advocate hard for sleep. How are you with caffeine? Do you do coffee? I don't do when, any caffeine. That's amazing. I don't yeah. do coffee, but you've got yeah. yerba mate. That seems um, like something you drink. <laughs> you know what, Joe? <laughs> what kind of roots we got in there? <laughs> There's plenty, no roots, right? just leaves. Okay, okay, just leaves. There you go. All right, <laughs> smart. It's smart. You want it to be light. It is light, but also you know what changed? I changed my oh, blueforia. Yeah, that's one a, of the many words in that a, can. Yeah, you know what? We're talking about people getting shamed for their sleep, <laughs> and now I'm getting beverage shamed right I mean, now. But, and... but man, oh man, it is uh, low hanging fruit, if I may. <laughs> It is. <laughs> you guys, yerba mate. I, I I would do this occasionally, but then I just went to Argentina with my sister and my nephew was there studying abroad earlier this year, like we mm-hmm. were there in May. And this is like their drink. That's where it comes from is okay. South America. And it's a communal thing there. Like you'll go, they have like mate club, which is where like my nephew would have groups of like his study abroad, like student friends. They would just go out and they sip mate and just talk and have, you know, bonding time. I like that. Even complete strangers. Like, we went to go rent a car. You just, like, if you're drinking mate, they'll offer it to a complete stranger. And it's just a way to just show, like, community. Wow. And, like, it, it, and so I was like, I fucks with mate. So yeah. when I came back, right, I was like, yeah. I was like, it's love. And there's love in this can. Oh, my God. And here I am. <laughs> judging Dunking it. on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I had no idea it was what will bring us all together. There's love in here, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it also tastes very good. And, and but it does. It's not nearly as much. It's much easier on the system. So it's not. You're not mm-hmm. going to get a jolt like caffeine, and you're right. not going to get the lows when the when the caffeine That's goes good. away. Yeah. I just I had just felt like if I got on the caffeine train, like It'd be a, I, I I see it. It's happened with my family where they they a lot of people can't function without no, it. No, I know. And I just I I, I have to have the restraint i mean the restraint i also don't like i'm not drawn to coffee in an, any way other than like a social right way. like right. when someone's like let's go get coffee right you're like and you're like i have to yeah <laughs> so then you order you don't know what to order and you're just like a latte please. yeah uh but yeah it's uh, i just don't it's I've, a slippery slope you think i think so and like if i'm not like if i loved the taste of it or something then maybe it would be more of a that'd problem. be even yeah i'm going to say that'd be even worse but i don't and it's not i it's very easy to say no and not not encounter it right. if you're not seeking it out right do you have an addictive personality i don't think so me neither it, if i wasn't allowed to ever have an alcoholic drink for the rest of my life you'd be fine i'd be totally fine yeah i think we're like when I, like I said, how we fell in love at big sky in the mountains of <laughs> billings montana we, <laughs> That's where people go for love. <laughs> uh, but no, it's just, it, it, no, with the, the sleep thing and then the not much of a caffeine person and then also what you just said about not having mm-hmm. addictive per- We're very similar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're very lucky, too. I mean. For sure. To not have. I, I said that to my one of my friends once, that the thing about not having a drink ever again. And they were like, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> because that is a hard thing for a yeah. lot of people. But it's just, I mean, I drink socially and it's like fun. Right, and but you know, you don't need it. No, I, I mean, I, I hung out at bars with my friends last night and didn't drink didn't just because I was like, no, no, I don't feel like it. Yeah, I don't like the judgment. Tony Baker talks about this. He doesn't like the judgment of when you don't drink because mm-hmm. I stopped drinking too. That was one of the things that I, with my veganism, I was like, I'm not 
I realized that I, and I wasn't drinking a lot by sure. any means, but yeah. I was like, when I was at the store or at some, and I was just hanging around, I would mm-hmm. just have a drink. And I'm sure. like, wasting money, killing brain cells. Yes, it's not healthy. It's no, there's no reason for it. Mm-hmm. There's I mean, nothing good. There's nothing. I don't know about nothing. Mm, what good? It, if you're like a little uptight, it can like make you a little loosey, goosey. Yeah, but like. But you don't have that problem. No, no. I don't really have that problem. But, like, there are other things you can do to, you know what I'm saying? It's a mm-hmm. distraction. It's like if you have an issue with, like, being uptight when you're around people, like, there's another way that's, yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? There's that's another a, way that's, that's a very that's, easy, accessible way to Right. And to it's help. and you're not helping your body. And mm-hmm. you're then no. also maybe uh, opening a gateway that could lead to you now to relying problems. on this thing. Yeah. To, to get you in a specific state. Like, people who drink before they go on stage. I've always been curious about Ooh, that because yeah. I, I'm the worst. Mm-mm. Have you ever been on stage tipsy before? I think maybe at an open mic, like, 10 years ago. Like, Wait, did you do the drunk show? No. No, at I did Big not. Sky? I didn't because I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, no. I signed up for it. And... Coincidentally, had a better set. <laughs> uh oh, you don't want to. You don't want to have that information. That's not helpful. I did, but even so, Dangerous. I was like, I'm sure I was like, that was a fluke. Like, there's. Yes. It was also a bar show, so like they want you to 100%. be drunk and slurring. 100%. Like, but when I'm taping my special, <laughs> I don't want to be slurring on. No. Stage, right? Oh my god! I mean, like, I don't even want to have eaten usually before if it's like an important set. That's any set. Yeah. I don't. You I mean, if it's like a fuck bathroom. around set, but like just being full, it's not a good feeling. Is not. You don't want to feel even a little bit bloated on stage. And it's the worst feeling, and you'll have to go to the bathroom. Like if you if you're nervous. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like I, I think that's why mean. a lot of comics don't because they, if it's a nerve thing, you're gonna have to go boo boo. And who wants to do that in a comedy club where the plumbing is trash? Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I. If it's an important set, I will maybe eat very little. That whole day, for sure. Oh, really? The whole day? Kind of. I mean, like, if I if I know the time and like, uh, I will, I'll pick my spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I will eat. I will eat very little. Yeah. Especially if it's a longer set. Right. <sighs> Joe, I feel like. <laughs> you gonna propose? I feel. Like <laughs> what would you do? Would you reject me in front of in front of all these people? These seven <laughs> listeners. Not for the seven. For the seven, I, w- I would say yes. And then afterwards, we'd have a very serious conversation. Candace, we've had four <laughs> conversations. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Relax. How are you? Are you? Um, are your room like you have? How many? Just one roommate. I got two. Two roommates. Live in a, a cute little house. Are they early morning people? Uh, one, Are they all comics? No, um, they're all they're both former comedians. Mm. So they're like comedy adjacent people. Got it. Who either write or act or, or do whatever now. Uh, one has a day job, so he's up and out, out before I even come close to seeing him. <laughs> and then I, I have another. The other roommate wakes up early often to do his job that he does from home. Okay, now my question was going to be, do them waking up early, does that, do you hear it? Does no. it bother you? I'm pretty good once I fall asleep. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. And, I, and I'm and i very lucky that also if, like, I wake up for some reason before I want to, yeah. I'm pretty good at falling back asleep. Back asleep. Yeah. It's And that's so nice because I know people who are like, once I'm up, I'm up. Yeah, no, and that's that, me a lot of the time. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very committed to falling back asleep. Yeah, no, sometimes I'll make my, do you have one of those, uh... No. Night no, masks? No masks. You don't need that? No plugs, no. <laughs> I'm pointing as a siren goes by, because yeah. this is... Where do you live? I live in historic Filipino town, which is uh, just across the highway from it's Silver Lake. Filipino town? Oh, my God, yeah. It's great. I didn't know about this. Well, it's very... It's not very cool, and it's not very uh, busy. It's very quiet. It's inexpensive. I love it. I didn't know about this. Yeah, so it is... Uh, have you ever been on Temple Boulevard? Maybe. It's not like if, sure. if you don't have to go there, then like you probably aren't. But like when <laughs> when Beverly Boulevard hits that weird intersection, mm-hmm. when it hits Virgil and I know Silver exactly Lake, where you're talking. Yes. What it does is it turns into Temple. Okay, yes, and yes. Yeah. So it turns into Temple, uh, and it's just right south of the one oh one. Okay. So then I'm I'm just off of Temple. I'm so close to Silver Lake. Mm-hmm. Uh but since I'm not technically in there, my rent is very cheap. Right. That's great. But I'm still close to everything. And but it's still like part, it's still city. 
like, and there's yeah. helicopters, and I'm sure ambulances. All the and, time. Yeah, and you can mm-hmm. just sleep through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about the leaf blowers that I want to fight every day? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I again, I'm I'm pretty good at. You can sleep through leaf through blowers. Stuff. Yeah. I'm so envious of you. I'm I want to punch good. you in the face. Yeah, I know this is where our, our similarities. Uh, yeah, I'm a work off. I'm a light sleeper. I'm it's so like sorry. I love sleep, but someone could turn my doorknob and I'd be like, Yeah, who is like, there? Oh, but the, uh, Yeah. Also, it's terrifying because I live by myself. <laughs> so yeah. Who is turning my doorknob? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not a bad instinct then. No. <laughs> you're just keeping yourself. Yeah. Safe. Yeah. But no. So you're seeing. That's what I and. Is there do you in your sleep expertise? Please. Is there any way for me to achieve that where I'm more of a sound sleeper? What would you? Is there yeah. any besides earplugs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know because I don't do any of those things. So I, I'm not an. I, I I think I would have a better idea if I was not a sound sleeper and then I became a sound sleeper. But I've just always always been, been a sound. sound. So and you can sleep on plane. Can you sleep anywhere? Are you one of those people that can sleep anywhere? Well, here's the. I have never been on a plane and not fallen asleep. That is like, it is just something I about what's going on with like the air pressure or I'm something. I'm so mad at you right now. But like, I truly. This I'm, is why I'm, we won't work. I'm. <laughs> this is why. I'm on a plane and I am out. Like the minute you get on the plane? Sometimes. And then the whole entire way? No, I mean, it depends on the length of the flight. What if it's like a six hour flight? N- I, that, that'd that be crazy. But it depends on. <laughs> and, and after you've just already had a full night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, like. I, I will fall asleep for some of it, uh, but, like, especially if it's I have to wake up for the flight, like, it's a 6 a.m. flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll go right back to sleep when you get oh, there? Oh, I'll probably sleep the entirety of the flight. Uh, that has fucked me up before. Once to go, I went from L.A. to New York, 6 a.m. flight, stayed up for the flight, slept the entirety of the of the flight, but what that does is that makes you so that in New York... You go to sleep at 9 a.m. Yes. <laughs> I was so messed up. I was so fucked up. I didn't know. I just didn't. I, I didn't know if I was tired or not. Like, I, that truly messed me up. And I, I was like, it's time to go to sleep. It's like, no, it's not. Because it's not 9 a.m., which is when you want to go to sleep now. Sleep. But also, the sun's at. Like, because there's also, obviously, things just about where the sun is. For sure. That affects your rhythms. And, For sure. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that was that was rough. I've had that a few times where, like, uh, I will be traveling often for comedy, <laughs> and it's just, like, I the time change fucks with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, I'm just up, and I, I don't know what's going on, and I feel insane. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to perform? Like, one time, uh, and this was, like, awful. I had, I had a flight that was, like, a red eye that mm-hmm. I was catching, and then I was supposed to perform the next night. True. But my flight got delayed. Seven oh, hours. Oh no, I have never. I I'm I'm lucky. I've never had a delay that bad. That's like, Jesus. I had to. I went. I landed in my. De- it was Indiana. I forget where the flight, the city we landed into, but I was performing in Bloomington. I ended up having mm-hmm. going. I was went straight from the airport to the club, and then almost and immediately got had up. to perform, and then in the same underwear <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing the day before. Yeah. Was it was it exciting on some level? No. Because because they don't know. In well, I guess maybe I have a dirty secret. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally dirty. Yeah, no. It, I felt you know you want to feel fresh on stage. Oh, I don't I, know, is that course. just me? No, you, no. <laughs> is that just me? That is not just you. You, I, I mean, I want to feel like I'm Alive. at the top of my game. Yes. You know, and I felt stale. Yeah. Because not only had I, you know, I told her I can't sleep places. If I'm not, I need a bed. Okay. Like, yeah. even on a couch is hard for me. Like, if mm-hmm. I'm sleeping and I'm on a sofa, like, I might have, like, a, a little bit of a nap. It's not a sound sleep. It's not good rest. Planes, no. Like, I, my eyes are closed, but I wake, my eyes will be open yeah. every 45 minutes, and I'm mm-hmm. just not comfortable. So. I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> Do you struggle uh, with sharing a bed? Luckily, I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that's one way. Joe, I'm vegan. I have lots of gas. I <laughs> have to get up at ridiculous hours in the morning to prepare smoothies that take 45 minutes. I 
am unlovable. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Candace, what has happened to you? I'm an advocate for separate beds. I, I'm an advocate for separate bedrooms. Separate, separate houses. I mean, uh, there, I'm not there's, a, even, there's a way to make that work. I'm easy, not even. I think. If you trust somebody, then like, yeah, why do you have to? Yeah. Why do you have to cohabitate? Like, we have it's such a, yeah. different patterns. Yes. I, I want separate bathrooms, se- definitely separate bedrooms. Why? Yeah. Why are those things you have to share? I'm just, I. It's crazy. Yeah. I, f- people are I such followers that I think that just society, mm-hmm. even, I have such strong views on marriage and just in general, like, Ma- people think people are like, why is there so much divorce? And I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Have a seat. Is because marriage, when marriage, the institution of marriage was created, love was not a factor. You didn't marry for love. You married for business. Like you married to ra- have like you had a farm and land, I, had a lot of land. Yes, property. Being, yeah, like yeah, you didn't marry because oh, this is the one. This is my soulmate. Nobody was talking about that back then. And there's a reason why the father is bringing the bride down to essentially give sell to, her yeah uh-huh. away. And mm-hmm. then at some point in time, I don't know what decade this happened. But we started trying to force the love into we it. We became obsessed with the uh, the story arc of true love. Right, and I believe I blame theater. I blame the movies. <laughs> I blame rom coms. No, no, yeah, our entertainment has absolutely poisoned our brains yes. with that message. Where it was like before, it was like you married because it worked. Like this was a functional unit. Like we're gonna raise this family. This is your purpose. Have, this is yes, mine, and we we're have, gonna agree on what our roles are in yeah, this unit to accomplish our goal. Yes, not. Not for you give me butterflies and I think you're my soulmate and this is going to last forever because we're just meant to be. It's like we are repopulating the earth. <laughs> that was, it was functional. And we are, uh, yeah, It wasn't for crops. feelings. Right. Yeah. It was functional, not for feelings. And then we try to infuse the feelings into it. And it's like you, the odds of you finding somebody who not only works with your work schedule <laughs> And when you get up in the morning and also wants to have the exact same amount of kids that you want to have in the order you want to have mm-hmm. them, and also you really, like, like this person? It's unrealistic. It's so unrealistic to say they're going to find that everything you want in one person. But I also think that is what excites people is the idea of, like, hitting the jackpot. Absolutely. And then they find out seven years later. That, oh, <laughs> what I thought was this turned out to be that to be that and, and i thought and i i was a little uh starstruck and, and uh you know i had fucking goggles on or whatever yes. you want to say where i just didn't see i want i saw what i wanted to see Ex- absolutely eyes were bigger than our belly type thing like what? oh i can't you ever go to a restaurant you're like oh i want this and this and this and this buffet please and then you look at it and you're like this is yeah i'm done i'm n- i'm done like <laughs> i've had enough yeah and that's essentially what happens <laughs> with love right and, we and, liken it to a buffet uh, but also, if it's a buffet that can change. <laughs> <laughs> Are these options changing? Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought this was seafood. It was seafood for like 10 years. What is going... Now it's now it's just rice? What the fuck is going on? What happened to the crab legs? Good. I, I signed up for crab legs. Uh, crab legs. So, and yet? So that's... So I, and I, I also think that... What happens is that you generally just get so used to somebody after being waking up next to them every day, you can legit just be like, all right, what's next? Yeah, I, it, it just occurred to me that also this is two single people being like, we got it figured out. And maybe we do. Maybe we're the maybe next do. step in an evolution of the species. For sure. Are your parents still together? They are. Mine are too. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That's pretty weird and that, then, like, we're pretty cynical about the whole process. Yeah, but... gr- growing up in an environment with that and seeing it and that it can work. Yeah. But we're still just I, – I figured out that they are the exception, not the rule. Interesting. Yeah, I think I'm, I might be with you there. Yeah. it's that. That's not most people. Yeah. How long have your parents been together? They just celebrated their 43rd in, in, uh, in July. Ooh, that's re- – mine are at 36. Oh, my God. See, guys? <laughs> Love isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> I love this man because he understands that love isn't real. (laughs) I had this conversation with somebody at the comedy store not that long. I was like, love is a choice. Love is a choice. Love is 
once you get through, because the feelings of butterflies or whatever is, is going to fade away. Like, that's going to go away. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be there. So now, at that point, once that goes away, you're now choosing to stick around because you respect this person. You really like this person. or And just because you guys have agreed, this is a team. We're doing this together. Yeah. That's love. Like, that is saying that even though all these other things, even though I want to bounce, I'm sticking around because... What we've made here, I respect it so much and I cherish it so this much. This is what I want. This yeah. Is this, I, if this is the rest of my life, yeah. then this is as good as you can get. It's good. That you have to. I've said over and over again that my parents work because my dad knows he can't do any better. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He knows. He's like, this is it. It's it. And I think most people think the grass is greener. I do think they think that. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to try this because... You're just in the routine of doing whatever, and you're like, oh, this is exciting. Let me try this. And then you're like, oh, this person's not what I want at all. It was just exciting for, like, three weeks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you let your brain, if you have the type of brain that can kind of spin out like that. Yeah. Crazy. Are you going to get married to me on this podcast? Yeah. Well, let's set it up. A live episode. Uh, just we'll, we'll have to figure out our schedules. We're both very busy. Uh <laughs> But if we can get a minister in here, someone just someone who's ordained, really, is all we need. Uh, anybody. Anybody that's ordained and also not before noon. Please. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's so sad is I didn't re I did not have to use it ultimately, but I did set an alarm for noon for this show. Just in case. Just in case. But I, I, I got up before then. Thank God for alarms. No, yeah. I'm dead serious. Yeah, I know. Because you don't. I set an alarm last night when I fell asleep before my set. I was like, yeah, for sure. I made myself wake up and be like, no, set the alarm for 1130. And how nice that we don't have to do it on a clock anymore, that we just have to, we get to do it on our phones. That's really. Pretty soon we're just going to have to be like. <laughs> Brain, wake me up in 20 minutes. Yes. Brain, put me to sleep and then wake me up in 20 minutes. And have you watched Years and Years on HBO? No, I have not. Watch it. That's okay. all I'm going to say. All right. Fair enough. Technology. You guys, oh man. You have to go. It's time to say goodbye. <laughs> now it's time to say goodbye. Do you do Do Not Disturb on your phone? I think it's on Do Not Disturb most of the time. Hell yeah. Yeah. You? Uh, when I'm asleep. Or like right now. Or yeah, like I think it's I... on. Yeah, mo I think that's the right. Because I don't like people. Mm -hmm. So just in general. <laughs> right. I know. Just in general, I. Yeah. G g go away. I I'll get to you when I'll get to you. Right now, I'm, I'm supposed to go to a birthday party. That I don't want to go to. Is it far away? I don't even know, Joe. I don't know <laughs> where it is. That, didn't get to that step? Nope. Didn't. I saw the... And I'm just now starting to have feelings about birthday parties. In LA, it is a thing. It's a thing you have to plan for. That, you have like, to carve out time. Before I moved here, birthday... I, I just have never lived in a place where yeah. adults' Celebrated. birthday parties were such a thing. Well, you know what it is out here is that they're also networking opportunities. And that's why... Is that what you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. When I wasn't doing anything, no one showed up to my birthday parties. And uh, then all of a sudden, I did the Tonight Show. And then... And then here come... Hey, hey. Ken, I wasn't... I, did, you, did you get invited to Candace's birthday party? I didn't get invited to Candace's birthday party. And I'm not even kidding. That was... I, someone yeah. told me someone said that. And I'm like, my birthday party is not an event. Like, it was just me, for my friends. friends to come out and have a couple of drinks, yeah. and I'm sorry if I didn't think about you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you hate, yeah, maybe next year. Yeah, you know, I'm, and I have friends that are just like, who won't throw birthday things because they don't, they know it's not going to be a good turnout. And I'm like, the, that's maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> we get some publicity yeah, going. Maybe book Conan, and then you'll have a reason well, to celebrate some heat and yourself. Then, yeah. <laughs> It's so sad, but I'm telling you. That's that's. I think that's. I think that's honestly what it I, is I, out yeah. here. You have to, yeah, that it tracks. People, people are trash. Wow. <sighs> Joe, this was such a lovely time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm such a great so time. sad that it went by this quickly because I feel like we could have gone in other directions. But <laughs> I I loved the directions we went in. <laughs> I really. Did. I will have you back because if Anytime. you're willing to come back. Anytime. I'll and be I'll here. have a ring ready. <laughs> you better. <laughs> Lock it down. <laughs> you guys, thank you for tuning in one more time to The Struggle with Candace Thompson. If you have not subscribed, make sure to do that. Rate and review us on iTunes. And if you have not told anybody about it, make sure you do that. Follow me on social media, Jokes by Candace and Candace Thompson Comedy for my shows. One more time, Joe, where can people find you? At Joe K. Joe K. on Twitter, Joe Qua on Instagram, and uh, JoeQuazala.com. It has all my dates and all my stuff, all my videos and, and shit. 
That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, what's up? You guys, don't forget to get a full night's sleep tonight. It's important. For us. If you've learned nothing from this podcast, don't don't let anybody sleep shame you. All right? Get it in. Until next it time. In. <laughs> we mean sleep. <laughs> well, you could do that and then get to sleep. Get it in and then really get it and in. And then get it in. <laughs> we talking about the sleep. <laughs> Till next time. Bye, guys.